Hello, fourth graders. Welcome to lesson 4.12. Uh, we have been talking about some interesting things lately, right? We did uh, a lesson on wrestling and a lesson on swimming pools. Now, technically, there were one on mu multiplication and one on uh, uh, rectilinear figures. But today we'll start with talking about music. What's your favorite song or instrument? All right, let's see how this leads into what we're doing today. Uh, here's our math message. It says Mrs. Rogers has $350 to order music books for the new school year. Music books cost $10 for each book and come in packages of five. Mrs. Rogers orders six packages. How much money will she have left after she buys the books? All right, I want to, I'm going to uh, have you hit pause here so that you can reread this and kind of do that visualizing that we are uh, that we talk about so much, right? Get a picture of, in your mind of what's happening, what things look like. Okay, do that for me now. Okay, what do I see? I see Mrs. Rogers and I see that she has $350. And we want to know at the end how much money she has at the end, right? That's the goal is to figure out how much money she'll have left. So we'll obviously need to figure out how much money she has spent. We need to look for a starting place. So let's look in here. Music books cost $10 for each book and come in packages of five. What could we do to start? What's your idea here? All right, so what I'm going to suggest is that we think about how much each package costs because we don't know how much the package costs, right? That's one thing that we need to know. So if there are five books and each one costs 10, then we know that one package of books costs $50, okay? Now, how many packages did she order? Well, here we go. Right? She ordered six packages, right? So each package costs $50. She ordered six of them. So we are not going to add up six fifties because we are beyond that, right? We are going to multiply times six and get 300. Now, we always want to kind of label our answer as we go and think about what we have just discovered. We have just discovered that $300 is the amount of money that she spent right that's how much all the books cost is that the final answer no it's not right because if you remember we said at the beginning that we want to know how much money she has at the end so she started with 350 dollars then she spent 300 she has 50 dollars that's our label remaining at the end so what we had to do here, right? We had to absolutely take time to understand the problem, right? If you don't understand the problem, you are gonna be just kind of floundering off in, in Never Never Land, okay? How do you understand the problem? Rereading it, visualizing it, looking for key parts of the question, right? Not just looking for one word and thinking that, oh, this, is good. this word tells me to add, right? That can be a clue, but that is not um just you don't want to just go searching for words that tell you maybe what you're you're supposed to do right not just one word is going to tell you that anymore our objective here we are solving multiple step multiplication number stories and we will check to see if our answer makes sense okay so let's do that here right we got an answer of 50 and if she had if she had $350 to start, the music is going to be fairly expensive. And it, it's an answer that does make sense that she would have $50 remaining. It fits the question. Okay, we're in here solving real world problems today. All right. When you uh, solve a number story, you need to first make sense of the problem and then choose an appropriate estimation strategy based on what the problem is asking. OK, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we work on number one here. Go ahead and open in your book to page 137. 
All right. We're going to write some estimates here. All right. That's not something that we did on the first one. We weren't asked to, but we are here. Daniel, Danielle and Hector are selling raffle tickets to raise money for the school band. Danielle sells five tickets per day for four weeks straight. Then she sells four tickets per day for one week. How many tickets does Hector need to sell if he wants to sell more tickets than Danielle? All right, let's make sure we understand our ultimate goal. What What's our goal here? We need to find the number of what? We have to find the number of tickets Hector needs to sell if he wants more than Dan Danielle, right? So we're going to need to first figure out how many Danielle sold. So what do we know here? Let's do, let, we know that she sold five tickets per day for four weeks straight, okay? So five tickets per day. Well, let's see, four weeks, four times seven, right, is 28. We're going to round that to 30. Okay, so our first part of our estimate, let's see, can I make this bigger? Aha. First part of our estimate, she does five tickets per day for about 30 days, right? Which is how much? 150, right? And then she sells four tickets per day for a week. So four times seven is 28. So that's about another 30 tickets. So our estimate here is that our, Hector's going to need to sell around 180 tickets. Okay, but we need to be able to find those exact numbers. And that's what we're going to do here, right? Five tickets per day, four weeks. Remember four weeks, that's 28 days. So we need to do five times 28. Well, we're not going to do that too much in our head. 28 times five. Five times eight is 40. Five times 20 is 100. Okay, that's 140. Let's get that on here. 140. So what is that 140? What is it? It's tickets, right? And it's the number of tickets she sold in the first four weeks. Then she sold four tickets per day for one week. How many more? How many tickets is that? Yeah, it's twenty-eight more, right? If you said one hundred and sixty-eight, you're in the right. You were you were right too, right? Because we need to add twenty-eight more because that's what she sold in this week. And that gives us 168 tickets. And so really, our guy here, uh, Hector, needs to sell another one. He needs to sell 169. But this answer says more than 168. All right. So does your answer make sense? That is just not my favorite question. My, uh, I, when you see that, you should think, does my answer fit the question that was being asked, right? And is it close to my estimate? Our estimate was 180. Our question was, how many tickets does Hector need to sell if he wants to sell more tickets than Danielle? 180, pretty close to uh, 168, right? So all of those things together indicate that our answer fits. So we're going to write that down here and explain. My, always too big when I start, right? My answer fits the question because it tells how many tickets Hector needs um, and it is close to my estimate. This is a compound sentence, right? I have two complete sentences. I connected them with a comma and a connecting word, a conjunction, the word and. All right. You only have one problem to do today. And that is because this pro these problems take a long time. Okay. 
your problem that you're doing today is number two. And it's right down here. Okay. Now I know that there's more in this lesson. There's number three and number four, but I'm your favorite teacher. Uh, and so I'm super nice. So you're just doing one. Okay. And we might look at some of the other ones in some of our, uh, our groups. Okay. But I want you to take the time that you need, right? Don't just slop something down here. If you're only doing one problem, spend enough time to really think through that. Now, when we one one thing that you might um, have forgotten, this word dozen, right? A dozen eggs is twelve. Okay, so there's one little little hint there. But you're gonna need to think. You're gonna need to read. You're going to need to reread, visualize, go through those estimating steps. You're going to need to work on it, probably on some scrap paper like I did, right? When I went to that other screen, right? And did some of my problems there so that you can try to solve this problem and then be able to explain if your answer fits the question that's being asked. Not just does your answer make sense, but does it actually fit what you are being asked? All right. That's it today, uh, everyone. This is uh, problems, our goal here, right? Being able to solve multiplication problems with multiple steps, right? And that's what we're doing today. We really have to be good readers and thinkers in this math lesson. All right, fourth graders, good luck.